Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a public speaking guru from Montreal, Canada, Mr. Brendan Kumarasamy. Brendan, welcome to the show. Ash, the pleasure is mine. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. Brendan is the founder of Master Talk, and he's a public speaking coach. So, Brendan, before we talk public speaking, tell me a little bit about your own own journey and what took you to public speaking. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So my journey started in business school. I wanted to be an accountant. That's what I thought I was going to do with my life, Ash. Okay. You know, when I somebody told me in my first semester of college, I was supposed to work for one of the big four accounting firms. So I thought mm-hmm. PricewaterhouseCoopers was a water bottling company. That's how my mm-hmm. journey kind of began. Okay. But then as I got older, I started competing in case competitions, Ash. Think mm-hmm. of it like professional sports for nerds. While mm-hmm. the guys my age were playing cricket or basketball or rugby, I wasn't one of those guys. I did presentations competitively. That's how I learned how to speak. Mm-hmm. But I accidentally developed a talent, Ash, on teaching other people how to speak wow. because I was teaching other students on mm-hmm. how to communicate And then I realized a few years later that no one was really sharing free communication resources on Mm -hmm. YouTube. So I just started posting videos and here we are today. Wow. Fantastic. And, you know, when I was reading about you preparing for our conversation, I was interested to see, you know, see your mission is to empower every human being on earth to become an exceptional communicator. Help me understand this uh, and give me an example. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm a big believer, Ash, that the next Oprah Winfrey, the next Elon Musk, the next world changer is probably a seven year old girl in a third world country who can't afford a communication coach. Mm -hmm. So the thought is, how do I finish what Dale Carnegie started? Mm -hmm. You know, of course, Dale is one of the most prolific communication experts that's ever lived on Earth, Mm -hmm. right? the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People. We all know the work. But because he was born in that time period of history, Mm. we don't really know what he sounds like. He Mm. never had a chance to come on a podcast or start his own YouTube channel. Mm. Whereas I was very fortunate in my life, Ash, Mm. very grateful that I was able to develop the skill set to be able to coach this at a very high level relatively early in my career. Mm -hmm. So I have an opportunity to democratize the world's information in a way Mm. that Dale Carnegie couldn't when he was alive. So that's my that's the overarching. Fascinating, fascinating. And how do you define communication? Great question. So my definition of communication is how do we convey an idea to achieve a specific outcome for a specific audience? Let me Mm. repeat that again. How do we convey an idea in a way that achieves a specific result for a specific audience? Mm. And that's a wide range of topics. That could be Mm. convincing your significant other that we should have Mexican food tonight instead of Chinese food. Mm. It could be convincing a board of executives that they should buy into your million dollar project. Mm. It could be guesting on a podcast and sharing information or inspiration for the Mm. audience listening. Mm. That's what communication is to me. Fascinating. So, you know, when I was in in school, uh, with Roman Roman Catholic uh, brothers, one of the things that they always told me about communication was that communication also means that the other party has understood what you're trying to say. What are your views on that? Absolutely. You know, I've always believed there's multiple parts to communication. You really touched on one. The, the first one is how do we get people to listen to our ideas? Correct. That's one. But there's also two other pieces that we miss. The second one is how do we get people to take action in our ideas, Ash? Correct. And the third one, in some cases, is mm. how do we get people to share our ideas? Mm. And that's what we always need to consider whenever we're communicating ideas. Mm. Well said. And, you know, one of the biggest fears that a lot of people have is going and speaking in public. You know, whether it is at a, at a small corporate group or in front of a few friends. So my question is, what are some of the common fears or misconceptions that people have about public speaking that you have encountered? And how do you help them overcome these? Absolutely, Ash. You know, for me, at the end of the day with communication, we need to apply what's made us successful in our lives already mm-hmm. into communication. Let me give you an example. Mm. Think of every accomplishment that we're proud of. And this Mm. could be getting married, having children, asking somebody on a date, applying for a job, getting Mm. an interview, Mm. starting a business, going to a 
an amazing school. Mm -hmm. Do any of those accomplishments have zero fear attached to it? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Mm -hmm. There's always some fear moving a country, leaving for another opportunity. Yet with communication, we tell ourselves, Ash, unfortunately, hey, you know, I am not that great at this and I'm scared, so I'm just not going to do anything. Mm. And I feel that's really fascinating. So for me, the question has never been, how do we get rid of the fear? Because I had a lot of fear when I started Master Talk. Mm. For me, it was more about saying, how do we create a motivation that is far greater than the fear? Mm. Example, why do we still apply for the job even if we're scared of it? The mm. reason is because the fear of being broke is significantly higher than the fear that comes with job interviews. And we mm. need to create that incentive. And the question is, how would your life change if you're an exceptional communicator? Mm. Fascinating. Well said. And what are some of the important skills that you teach your clients when it comes to public speaking? Yeah, our approach, Ash, is how do we take a systematic strategy for us to communicate ideas effectively? Mm -hmm. Because the problem with comms in general is it's very vague. Like, how do you Mm -hmm. measure tangible progress and success in the skill? Mm -hmm. So I think what I brought to the industry was simplicity, practicality, generosity. Mm -hmm. Communication for me is like juggling 18 balls at the same Mm -hmm. time. One of those balls is body language. One of those balls is facial expressions. One of those Mm -hmm. balls is storytelling. And it could get really confusing really quickly. So for me, it's about saying, let's focus on the three easiest balls to build Mm. momentum. Mm. I'll give you an example. The first one is the random word exercise. Pick a word like pistachios or tablecloth or home and create Mm. random presentations out of thin air. And Mm. this really helps you deal with uncertainty. Do that five minutes a day. Mm. Wow. And how do you tailor your coaching approach to meet the specific needs of each client? And- What are some of the very effective strategies that you have used to help improve people, help people improve their public speaking? Yeah, you know, I like any business owner, Ash, when I started, I didn't even know it was a business. I was just making videos for fun in my mom's base, but I never thought it would turn into what it is today. But I think what I learned along the journey to make this business advice and communication advice, Mm -hmm. there's a very big difference between the person who watches my videos, let's say on YouTube, and the person who invests in the service. Mm -hmm. Because for example, if there's a high level executive who wants communication, they're not gonna watch 10 videos on YouTube. They'll watch one for credibility, but they're they're trying to save time, Mm -hmm. not money. So I think what I found is whether it's the executive, the entrepreneur, or the coach who's really Mm -hmm. successful, Mm -hmm. for them, the approach is the same, but the context is different. Let Mm -hmm. me give you an example. So let's say we take the range of word exercise. You take a word like tissue and you create random presentations out of thin air. So what we'll do is I'll force clients to do this a hundred times in two weeks, Mm. but the context will be different. Mm. So the entrepreneur will say, well, if I do this a hundred times, I'll be a lot more effective on sales calls. Mm. I'll be a lot more effective when I talk about the vision to my staff, Mm. whereas the executive will say, I'll be a lot better in the boardroom. I'll be able Mm. to manage the day-to-day operations better and do really well in my job interview. Mm. So the advice is the same, but the contextual application is different. Mm. Interesting. You know, a few minutes back, you were talking about presentations and how you uh, start to make effective presentations that led you to good public speaking. I've often seen that people are not able to handle presentations well. And someone came to me the other day with, saying I've got a 30 minute presentation and here is my 30 slide deck. And I said that 30 slide deck is going to take you two hours. I wanted to ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges you have seen people face when it comes to delivering effective uh, presentations? Absolutely, Ash. And I, I would agree with your statement as well. You know, if you've got too many slides, it's going to take a while. So for me, the, the way we approach this, because the challenge is the same, which is people are busy especially if you're someone who's already really successful in your career, you might've been told about your presentation at work three days before you had to give it. Mm. So you're just putting slides together and figuring it out. Mm. Whereas for me, my approach has been twofold. One is find the repeatable presentation in your career that Mm. you continuously refine. Mm -hmm. The best communicators in any industry present the same thing over and over and over again. Like Tony Robbins has been giving the same speech for 40 years. Mm. It's always the same thing. 
And that's why he's so good at delivering it. So let's say for an entrepreneur like yourself or people listening, it's very easy. The repeatable presentation is just the five minute pitch of your business. What are you mm. trying to build? What is the vision behind it mm. that you can keep repeating? The second piece is puzzle. Mm. Communication is like a jigsaw puzzle, Ash. You know, those little pieces you used to do yeah. together as kids. Mm -hmm. So now the question becomes, when we work on a jigsaw puzzle, which pieces do we start with first mm. and why? Mm. And the answer is the edges because the corners are easier to find in the box mm. and then you work your way into the middle. Mm. Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because in presentations, unfortunately, mm. we do the opposite. We mm. shove a bunch of content in our slides. We mm. ramble throughout the whole presentation. Mm. And the last slide sounds something like this. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Mm. So how you want to practice, practice like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm. Start with the edges first. Do just the introduction of that 30-minute presentation mm. 10, 15 times, mm. which will only take 20 minutes. Mm. Same thing with the close. What's a great movie with a terrible ending? Mm. Last time I checked terrible movie, then work your way into the middle. Mm. Very interesting. And, and how important is voice modulation? both in public speaking and while making a presentation. Absolutely, Ash. So voice modulation is really important. But here's what I'll say as a caveat. If you are not booking 50 minutes in your calendar every day to practice the random word exercise, you will not master voice modulation. Because in my 18 ball approach, voice modulation is probably ball number seven or eight. Okay. Whereas the random word exercise is ball one. So mm. really take action on that. But in terms of voice, I'm happy to answer it. So what I teach clients, Ash, is that there's three main types of vocals. Mm. Normal, how we normally speak. Mm. High vocal tones, which is 20% higher. Not 100% higher, mm. or else you're mm. yelling, but 20% higher than how you speak. And low vocal tones. So mm. not whispering, but 20% lower than how you speak. Mm. But the secret is that the best communicators on the planet, Ash, use all three of those tones Correct. at the same time whenever they speak. Correct. So they never sound like this the entire time. Mm. And they also never sound like this all the time. They take their audience through a roller coaster like this. Mm. John loves apples. He mm. has one every day, high vocals, mm. to keep the doctor away. So you have to keep switching your tones. Well said. Great, great response. Thank you. My next question is that, you know, what advice would you have for people who are looking to improve their public speaking skills? Absolutely. You know, my advice is always to build momentum. You know, the mm -hmm. biggest challenge with communication, Ash, I never believed is fear. Mm -hmm. I think it's consistency and motivation. Mm -hmm. If you want to get, let's say you want to lose weight, which I don't think is the case for both of us, but let's say you want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of easy steps you can start with, which is, mm -hmm. hey, don't eat any junk food, intermittent fasting, eat more healthy, no more soft drinks. And if you do that for two weeks and you measure yourself on the scale when mm. you start and in two weeks, and let's say you lose two pounds, mm. you go, oh my God, there's momentum and mm. you get really excited. You go, okay, now I'm going to invest in a nutrition coach. I'm going to go to mm. the gym more because yeah. you're seeing the results build up. Mm. But in communication, it's not as easy mm. to find that tangible progress. Mm. So for me, that's why I simplified. Like ball one is the random word exercise. Get to 100. Don't worry mm. about whether it's perfect, whether it's great. Get to 100. Ball two is the question drill. Ask yourself one question every day for five minutes that you think somebody's going to ask you about your business or mm. your career. Mm. That's what I did when I was younger. I would ask myself a, a, a communication question so I don't fumble in interviews as an mm. example mm. until I had an answer for everything or most things. And then the third one is video messages. Just pick three people you love every day mm. and send them a 20 second video message to say, mm. hey, I'm thinking about you. Thanks so much for being in my life. If mm. you do that for 30 days, you'll be really good at communication. Wow. Wow. What an amazing 101 on public speaking. Thank you. Uh, my next question is that what are some of, you know, we've spoken of misconceptions, but what are some of the common mistakes that you have seen a lot of people make while public speaking? For sure, Ash. There's so many. So I'll say that the biggest one is definitely lack of consistency. The reason people don't get the result is because they don't book time in their schedule to do those three exercises. Mm -hmm. That's the number one mistake. I would say the second one is audience engagement. 
people don't spend enough time talking to their audience to really mm. understand them. Mm. So I'll give you an example with me. When I started, you know, master talking, I started doing workshops. Mm. I would sit down with people for three to four hours, mm. just asking them powerful questions, which weren't that powerful back then. But mm. today, I guess they're powerful, which questions like, hey, if you were in my shoes, how would you present my ideas better? If you had to change one thing about my presentation, what would you change and why? Mm. If you were to explain my ideas back to me, mm. how would you explain my ideas? I got the second question from Kevin mm. Sistrom, the founder of Instagram. Mm -hmm. But that's really the key is you just ask these questions and you take notes. Mm. That's what I call target, mm. engage, evolve. Target the key outcome of your presentation. Mm -hmm. Then engage your audience to see if you're landing the outcome. Mm -hmm. And then your ideas will evolve over time. There's no mm -hmm. such thing as a perfect idea. Mm -hmm. You refine it constantly as you become a better communicator as well. And that's another mistake I see is people mm -hmm. don't engage their audience enough. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Uh, next question is on technology. Um, how, in your opinion, is technology changing public speaking? And the reason I'm asking you this is that I've spoken to some political leaders who have this little screen in front of them, both sides. And they say, we find it very easy to speak in public because we have our prompt in front of us. So how right. is technology changing public speaking? For sure, Ash. There's a couple of different ways we can go into this. Let me give you the first one, which is a lot of us in general are communicating less frequently verbally, mm. especially the newer generations. And the reason isn't because of you know behavioral traits that people are sharing online about a whole generation. I think that's mm. just a wide generalization. I think the reason is simply optionality. Mm. So 20 years ago, if you wanted to ask somebody on a date, you have to actually ask them. You have to go in front of them and say, hey, Whereas today you have the optionality or the option of saying, do I do that or do I swipe on an app? Mm -hmm. Same thing with calling versus texting. 25 mm -hmm. years ago, if you want to talk to someone, you got to get on the phone. You don't have a choice. Correct. Whereas today you can text or call and human beings value convenience. Mm -hmm. So they're naturally, including me, even if I'm the communication expert, I'm still texting a lot more mm -hmm. than I'm calling people. So because of that, the optionality of communication, the convenience of it is making us communicate less and less. So that's why I think where I think the big shift in tech is. Mm -hmm. But there's also a big benefit that people don't talk enough about, mm -hmm. which is because of the rise of technology, conversations like this are possible. Mm -hmm. So it allows you now you're, it's much easier if you leverage it properly to connect with the people who have similar interests as you who are mm. building really, really cool things. Mm. And the social in-person interaction of those connections is really, really special. Mm. So I think the advice for me is to see technology as a tool and mm. learn to leverage it in the right way to get the best results. Mm. It's just most people, unfortunately, don't do that. Amazing. And my last question to you now, Brandon, and this is for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation. You've already given us some amazing tips on public speaking and communication and presentation, but I'm going to ask you that based on all your experience of working with so many different people, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away? Absolutely. So the, the first piece of advice that I would give Ash that I think has really helped me in my career is be insane or be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to be like everyone else, that's totally fine. But if you made it all the way to the end of this interview, you probably really mm -hmm. care about impacting people and making a massive difference in your life. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I, the advice is always the people who make a massive difference in the world are often a little crazy. Don't you find it odd, Ash, that you're having a conversation with the guy that when he was 22, he started a YouTube channel, not on pranks or music mm -hmm. or what else what else the kids are doing but on communication tips mm -hmm. and then he went on to build a successful practice coaching a lot of people double his age yet he's really scared to drive mm -hmm. you know he's in the top one percent of all listeners on spotify for justin bieber and he can karaoke in eight different languages how mm -hmm. does any of this make any sense mm -hmm. and that's advice number one ash yeah. which is exactly the point mm -hmm. when every decision in your life makes sense to the only person that it should, which is you, mm. you'll be successful. Mm. So be insane or be the same would be my first piece of advice. Fabulous. Se second piece of advice would mm. be to young people. So 30s is still young for me is don't lose your lead. 
you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, life is long. You got all the time in the world. I don't really believe in that much because the life expectancy in the world right now is 72. And in the U.S., it's 77. Mm -hmm. So even at my current age, a lot of people look at me, Ash, they go, oh, you're so young. You're already so successful. You got so much time. And in my head, I'm thinking my life, my life is a third over. Mm -hmm. I, I need to get things done quickly. And a lot of us don't have enough urgency so my advice to anyone in their 20s is if you mm. find what you're good at and i got lucky i found it early but when you find it go get really focused mm. so that you can create the results for your life that will make a massive impact because time is running out mm. and that brings me to the third point realize who the real enemy is mm. a lot of people think ash that their enemy is you know somebody who did them wrong or the guy who cut them off in traffic that day mm. but the real enemy is time and mm. time is undefeated. It's unemotional. Mm. Yeah. And it wants you to waste it doing something you shouldn't be doing. So you need to figure out, always ask yourself, not how do I just leverage my money, but how do I use my time, which is way more valuable than money, so that I can create the maximum amount of success and productivity mm. in my life. Well said. And on that note, Brendan, and your three amazing lessons, I love the first one, which is be insane or be the same. Second, don't lose your lead. And third one, you said realize who the real enemy is which is time because time's the only thing which is not going to be mass produced again thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey about public speaking about presentations thank you for some incredible tips that you gave to my viewers and listeners on different aspects of public speaking thank you again and good luck thanks Ash. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.